Hello there, my name is Mr. Smart Donkey. Welcome to another episode of Weapons of the Wasteland. Thank you all once again for your continued support and feedback, and for voting on which gun I should be modding next. It seems a lot of you want to see the hunting rifle, so that's the gun I'll be modding today. You can turn a hunting rifle into a sniper rifle, but because there's too many combinations, I've decided to have the sniper rifle be a separate video, and completely focus on the hunting rifle only during this video. So as always, I'll start off by showing you guys the sights. So in this episode, because I'm doing the hunting rifle and the sniper rifle separately, I'm only going to be showing you guys the sights. I'm not going to be showing you guys the scopes. Uh, so we'll get to the scopes when I do the uh, sniper rifle video. So first of all, we have the standard sights, of course. Then we have the glow sights, which is just a standard sight with the green dots added to it. We have the reflex sight dot. And then last but not least, we have the reflex sight circle, my personal favorite. As always, we've got to find out how the unmodded weapon does first, so we can compare it, obviously, to our upgraded version. So the short hunting rifle, that's what it's called. It doesn't start out as a regular hunting rifle, but it's a short hunting rifle, similar to the musket, and I believe it was the double whale shotgun as well. But anyway, start off against these ghouls, as always. Our damage is 37, which is fairly significant. It's a, it's a good high-powered uh, shot weapon. Of course, it is bolt action, uh, or I'm not sure if it's... Yeah, I think it is bolt action, but yeah, it takes a while to reload every uh, shot, basically. Um, I mean, compared to the laser musket, it does more damage per shot, but of course the laser musket can be cranked several times to do more damage in each shot. But anyway, 37 damage, the fire rate is only 3. Uh, you can definitely tell it's a very slow firing gun, but that's, that. I mean, it has the high damage to make up for that, so it makes sense. Range is 131, 71 is accuracy, so that's fairly significant. It's a good... It's a fairly good long-range weapon, even uh, unedited, which is pretty good. Um, so we take care of most enemies fairly easily. I think they take two or three shots each. Um, and when we get um, an upgraded weapon, it'll, it'll go a lot faster. Super Mutant does take a few more shots, of course, because he is uh, quite tanky. Um, but he doesn't... Uh, he, he goes down at a fairly significant rate as well. I mean, it's nothing compared to the uh, pipe pistol or anything. I didn't have to edit this or speed this footage up or anything because it took several minutes to take care of him. Um, I also started uh, doing, as you'll see in a second, uh, from now on I'll be adding a little VATS um, comparison in there. I could have made this into the, like the four window thing as well, but I've decided to just keep it like this. So I shoot four times, or I shoot however many times I can, and then the first shot will always be a crit. So I was able to f shoot four times and then uh, the first shot was a crit, but we didn't manage to take him down with just those shots. So we have seen the regular short hunting rifle in action. It is time to start some upgrades. So, first of all, we're going to go for the receiver, of course. We're going to go for the calibrated receiver. So this just improves the critical damage, critical shot damage. There is no improvement in damage, uh, regular damage or anything else uh, like that. But there, there aren't really too many amazing options here. You can go for the heavy frame receiver, which does improve the damage a little bit, but free damage on top of 37 is a fairly small number, it's just not really worth it. it improves the rate of fire, completely pointless on this thing. Uh, I don't know why anyone would ever go for a lighter weight and reduce damage, it just doesn't like, I don't know, weight is not really something you should worry yourself with. So we're gonna go for the calibrated receiver. Um, starting from this episode onwards, by the way, I'll be adding a little fat segment in as well, so we actually can compare critical shot damage, because I hadn't done that before when I made the shotgun, double well shotgun. Uh, I had uh, increased critical shot damage as well, but I never tested it in vats, which basically makes it pointless. So now, anyway, calibrated receiver. For the barrel, we're going to switch to a, sh uh, a long barrel. So, um, as you, as I already explained earlier in the episode, I imagine in the beginning, um, I haven't recorded that yet, but uh, I'm sure I will have explained it. I am only going to do hunting rifles right now, um, so I'm not going to switch to a sniper rifle, even though this weapon can actually become a sniper rifle. That will be a separate episode, but yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that, uh, but I should have already explained it before. Anyway, so we're going to go for a long barrel, um, which increases our range and accuracy, also gives us better recoil, which is pointless, uh, poor hip fire accuracy. Uh, not too important. You don't tend to use the hunting rifle for uh, hip fire, so we're gonna switch to that. For the stock, we're gonna switch to a short stock because these ones require gun nuts rank one and two. Oh, forgot to mention we don't need any requirements for these upgrades uh, that we're gonna do now. Um, so yeah, don't, you can just make this from the get go if you've got the resources. Uh, for a magazine, we're gonna go for a quick eject mag. This is one of those things again where it's sort of like not in the right place. The large mag magazine is here, and then down there is a quick eject mag. Even though this doesn't require any. Uh, gun nut ranks at all, but we're gonna go for that one um, Magazine with the hunting rifle is fairly insignificant Like you can actually go for a medium magazine or even a large magazine once you got well I guess I mean if you yeah, if you have gun nut rank one you should go for this But um, you can go for a medium magazine instead of a quick eject mag It doesn't really make too much of a difference because a, a hunting rifle is a kind of weapon You don't tend to use in sustained combat 
You use it for your few initial long-range shots, um, especially when you've switched it to a sniper rifle. Um, but you don't tend to use it much in, like, sustained combat, so you don't really need, particularly need amazingly quick reloads or anything. But still, I prefer the quick eject mag anyway, so we're gonna, go, we're gonna go for that. But that's not something you need to get. You could even leave it at a regular magazine if you don't want to waste the resources. Now, for the sights, we're gonna go for a reflex sight circle, personal preference. And also, we're not gonna change to any scopes, because the moment I change it to a scope, you can see the name changes uh, to a sniper rifle. So... The reason, or the, the way you make a sniper rifle, this will be explained once I make the sniper rifle in more detail. Basically, all you have to do is change it to a long barrel and use a scope, um, any kind of scope, and it'll be a sniper rifle. But I think there's enough difference between the hunting rifle and the sniper rifle that I don't want to do that right now. I don't want to do it all in one episode. I, there would just be too many guns, and uh, I want to keep it to, like, basically upgrading three times, having four different guns, the standard gun and the three upgraded versions of said gun. So we're going to make the sniper rifle into a separate episode for that reason. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go for the reflex sight circle because it's personal preference. We're not going to have any muzzle because we can only put the bayonet on there right now. The other ones require higher gun nut ranks. And I don't think I really want to waste my range with a bayonet. And again, like I said, a hunting rifle is technically or generally a weapon you use for um, longer distances. So once you get into close range, you're not going to be using the hunting rifle anymore. So the bash is already, um, bayonet's not going to be too useful. So, that is the Tactical Calibrated Hunting Rifle. So we've seen the Tactical Calibrated Hunting Rifle being made, it's time to see how it does in action against the Feral Ghouls, the Raiders, and the Super Mutants. So, our damage is still the same, 37, but of course, uh, it's all about the crit with this weapon. You'll see when we actually get to the Vets bit, um, that it's, it's a fairly significant upgrade over the initial weapon. The crit is absolutely ridiculous, like, it's, it, it surprised me how much more damage it does uh, with a crit than um, the regular gun. So fire rate is still the same, three unrelated. Uh, 215 range, so range has gone up a fair uh, amount. The accuracy has gone up to 81 from at least 71 as well, so that's a fairly significant upgrade too. It's a pretty good gun. This this is a, a pretty good upgrade, even though the base damage hasn't gone up as, uh, at all, uh, which means that these fights are fairly similar to the previous uh, ones because the weapon hasn't changed much. The range has gone up a little bit. Accuracy has gone up a little bit. Um, but it's mostly variance anyway, but yeah, the critical uh, is where it really comes into play. You can already tell, like, I got a crit there. I don't know if it actually uh, determines the crit uh, damage from um, sneak crits. I'm not sure if that if it determines that crit damage as well, but if it does, um, yeah, it, that, that would be pretty good as well. But yeah, we take care of the super mutant if I had too much trouble. And then this is where uh, the critical stuff really comes into play. So the third shot is the crit. Just keep an eye on how much damage you do on the third shot. We managed to shoot four sh uh, times here. But we nearly don't even need it. The first shot just does so much damage, and then the fourth one manages to finish him off. So it's a pretty good crit right there. So we have seen the tactical calibrated hunting rifle in action. It's time to do some more upgrades. For the receiver, we're going to go to a powerful receiver. So the requirements for this, uh, for these upgrades is gun nut rank 1. So we're going to go to the powerful receiver. There's two options here. Um, there's a hardened receiver, and then there's the powerful receiver. Uh, the rest is uh, gonna rank two or uh, lower than that. Now, I don't quite understand the point. Like, I don't know why you would ever want to go for the hardened receiver, because even if you don't have the resources to go for the powerful receiver, because this qu requires a fair amount of aluminium, which is not necessarily rare, but it's harder to get by than some other resources. Um, even then, you probably wouldn't want to actually spend your resources on hardens. You probably just want to save up for the powerful receiver and stick to either uh, a standard receiver or a calibrated receiver like we did in the previous upgrade. Um, because the, the, the hardened receiver is just not enough of an upgrade to really justify wasting resources on it if you can get the powerful receiver if you spend or if you, you save your resources for a little bit longer. So I definitely... I mean, either way, if you have the option to go for the power receiver, always go for this, because the upgrade is, is much more massive than the hard receiver. The difference is 11 damage, uh, which is a very large number. For the barrel, we're going to go for a long light barrel. So we have superior range and sight accuracy, better recoil, and reduced hip fire accuracy. So it's basically a long barrel, slightly better than that. It has reduced hip fire accuracy instead of poor hip fire accuracy. The stats besides that are fairly similar, one accuracy higher as well. Um, this is one of those things that if you don't want to waste the resources, don't really bother, but... I'm going to go for it, because I can. Again, reduced, uh, or hipfire accuracy is not really a, a big deal anyway with this kind of gun, so. But I'm going to go for it anyway. For the stock, now we're going to go for a full stock. Um, I think this is surprising, actually, that you don't need a full stock to make a sniper rifle, because you can have a sniper rifle look like this, basically, with a scope on it. You, like, it still has this, like, 
one-handed thing, whereas the full stock, obviously, you dual wield. Well, I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird explaining it like that. You're not going to akimbo these these things, but anyway. So yeah, we're going to go for a full stock. There's better recoil again, though. Not necessarily that useful because recoil with uh, a hunting rifle is not very important because it's it's a very slow firing gun. Uh, so this is one that you don't even need to really get if you don't want to. Uh, it, it, it is even somewhat of a waste of resources, if you will, but I'm going to go for it because of the infinite resources. For the magazine, I'm going to go for the large magazine. Uh, we can't go for these ones yet. So a large magazine, this is what, what I explained earlier, is that the magazine size really doesn't matter too much. The, the quick eject doesn't really matter too much. Cause you, so you may as well go for a larger magazine, because the firing is so slow anyway, you're not going to be using it in sustained combat. The sights, I'm going to go for the reflex circle. I'll be going for this uh, for all of them, because it's just what I prefer. And again, if I go for a scope, it'll change into a sniper rifle. We don't want that, because that's for a, di a different video. So yeah, that's the sight. Uh, muzzle, once again, we can't go for anything. Um, I could put a bayonet on there, again, but same reason as I didn't do it before. It just reduces, it reduces the range, and it's not necessary. And these ones require both gun and rank 2. So, that is the tactical powerful hunting rifle. It's time for the tactical powerful hunting rifle to come into play. So this is the first gun, uh, our first upgrade so far that has a different damage than the uh, base gun. It has 55 damage, which is a, a really significant upgrade from 37. That's a, it's a really big, big upgrade right there. Fire rate's still the same, but it's unimportant. The range, I believe, is the same as the previous one, and the accuracy is also the same. Um, and what you'll see is that, uh, obviously, this gun does a lot better uh, in regular combat like this. It does a ton more damage. 55 over 37 is a really significant upgrade. But you'll see when we get to the VATS bit again, the critical damage from this, the previous upgraded gun is, is such a significant upgrade, it's absolutely insane. Because, well, you'll see when we get to the VATS thing, we can't even finish him off with the uh, the four or three shots we get with this in VATS. VATS does change as well, depending on... I'm not sure if it's weapon weight, or, or I, I really should look this up if I'm going to be making guides on, ga on guns. But, yeah, it... Um, it actually does, uh, you can actually only fire three times instead of four times with this, so there, there's something that changes that I imagine, but I, I'm not entirely sure about what that is. But you can see we can't actually finish him off, even though this gun is technically better than the previous one. So now we've seen the tactical powerful hunting rifle in action. It's time to do the final upgrades. So for these upgrades we require a gun nut rank 2. So once again though, to reiterate, uh, once we get to the sniper rifle, we actually are, are going to get to uh, higher... Well, we're going to need requirements, gun at rank 3, and we're just going to diversify a little bit as well. So we'll see slightly different weapons, because otherwise the hunting rifle and the sniper rifle are really similar weapons, of course. Uh, because it's made, I mean, the sniper rifle is made out of a hunting rifle. Anyway, for the receiver, we're going to go for the calibrated powerful receiver. So this is basically the powerful receiver combined with the uh, calibrated receiver. Um, which makes a superior damage, better critical shot damage and accuracy receiver. So this once again it has the same damage as the powerful receiver, but it has the extra critical damage as well. And it's 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 a pretty big improvement in the VATS anyway. You'll see once we get to the footage and, and the actual VATS comparison is um, is rather large. The damage just it goes up a lot. It's pretty crazy. So for the barrel, we're gonna go for the long ported barrel. So once again, this is just a slight upgrade from long light barrel. It uh, gives us superior recoil and poor hip fire accuracy instead of uh, instead of reduced hip fire accuracy, which is actually worse. Superior recoil, not actually important again. So this is once again one that you can actually stick to the long barrel if you're so inclined, because this is not really better. It's not really worse, but the poor hip fire accuracy instead of reduced hip fire actually makes this one or maybe even better than the long ported barrel because the recoil is so unimportant and all it does is improves the recoil on this. Um, I'm still going to go for it though, but yeah, you don't have to go for this. I think the light barrel or the long barrel are both fine options uh, if you wanted to go for those instead. For the stock, we're now going to go for the marksman stock. So once again, this is not one that's particularly useful, but this does improve the aim with scopes. Uh, which is important, of course. So, I mean, this is important once you, once we get to the sniper rifle. Not necessarily better uh, using the hunting rifle because we don't use scopes. Uh, we just use sights. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one where the sniper rifle will, will be very important for it, uh, improving the aim with scopes. Besides that, you can actually stick to the short scope. It doesn't add too much. Um, anyway, for the magazine, we're going to go for the medium quick eject mag. Uh, the large quick eject mag requires a uh, gun nut rank 3, so this is what I'll be going for once we get to the sniper rifles. We actually get to rank 3 gun nut, but we're not going to reach that with the hunting rifle right now. So we're going to go for the medium quick eject mag. Again, though, you could go for the large magazine or anything else. You could even stick to the standard one, not waste your resources, because it, you don't really need this that much. The sights, we're once again going for the reflex sight. 
that's personal preference. And the muzzle, now we can go for the compensator and the muzzle brake. We're going to go for the muzzle brake. Um, once again, not really a big deal at all. Actually, this is one where it may even be better not going for it either way. Because all it does is it improves the recoil control and better shot uh, per shot recoil. I mean, of course, it does do something. Um, but it really, like the, it's it's very unimportant because it is it is a one shot, like it's a bolt action basically. So you have to, it, it, there's a few seconds in between every shot anyway, and that gives you enough time to recover from the recoil from the initial shot. But I still, I'm gonna go for it because I've got infinite resources. But you really don't need to go for this. It also decreases the range a little bit, um, so that's something to consider. So you really don't need to go for this. You could stick to no muzzle. It might even be better not to go for it, but yeah, because I have infinite resources, I'm going to go for it anyway. So that is the Marksman's Calibrated Powerful Hunting Rifle. It's time for the last gun, but definitely not the least, the Marksman Calibrated Powerful Hunting Rifle. So this gun has basically the best of both worlds. It has both the critical damage increase and it has the 55 base damage from the we saw in the previous one as well. So yeah, damage 55, fire is still the same, unrelated free. Uh, range 197 has actually gone down a little bit. The accuracy has gone up uh, by one, I believe, to 82, but 197 range, so it has gone on, uh, down a little bit because of the muzzle we put on there, of course. Um, but yeah, it's all about that base damage. It, this weapon really is just about damage and about uh, the crit. It's absolutely amazing. We're gonna see that when we use the sniper rifle as well. As I've mentioned before, several times I believe at this point we're only looking at the hunting rifle right now we're gonna turn it into the sniper rifle in a separate video uh, so I can just show that off in a different uh, way I might even make a separate arena for that as well make it a little bit longer because we'll be scoping a lot so there you go super mutant um, you'll see the damage here on the first shot is a critical as always just look at the damage there it just takes absolute care of him it probably could have killed him in one shot if I hadn't done some damage first absolutely insane so it's time to compare the four guns. So this was a hard one to compare because the first two guns and the last two guns have exactly the same damage. Uh, 37 for the first two and 55 for the last two. The only difference, of course, being the critical damage, but that doesn't come into play when you're just firing regularly without using VATS. So you can see the first or the last two were basically done at the exact same time. The only variance there was just me firing slightly slower at one of the guns. Uh, the first two guns are almost done at the exact same time, but the only difference there was the quick eject mag the second gun had, which the first one did not. Thank you all once again for watching this episode of Weapons The Wasteland. Please let me know what gun you'd like to see me mod next. Show me to do the sniper rifle next or a different gun altogether. Let me know in the comments. 